Hey everyone, Mike here once again, and welcome to my channel. It's a gorgeous day on a Sunday, and I'm gonna do a little bit of work on my sky, nothing uh, real major. And what it is, is basically the rear uh, valance of, um, of my sky. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. Well, what I basically did a few weeks ago is I switched from a base uh, single exhaust to a dual exhaust from a red line. And instead of cutting the hole on the left-hand side here for the valance, I actually got a red line uh, valance instead, and it was actually from a guy on Facebook who unfortunately totaled his sky. Um, he was parting it out, and I said that's what I was looking for. So uh, I went ahead and I got it from him. And as you can see, it's even though I installed it, I probably should have left it off, but I was out of town when I was installing it, so I needed to drive back. But anyway, as you can see, it's kind of um, scuffed up a little bit, which is fine. I mean, wait, where are we at there? Uh, down here. And uh, which is fine, you know, it was a total, um, a total uh, sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back off again, and I'm going to go ahead and paint it. I've actually tried doing some of those, you know, back to black and those other kind of different things you can buy over the counter. Just couldn't get it to look right. Couldn't get rid of the scuff marks and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead um, and uh, paint it black. So I need to head to the store, get some primer, get some paint, get this thing off of here, and get her done. But first, I need to do a cold startup. I'll be back in a flash. And just like that, I'm back from the store and I just now need to raise the back end of the, uh, the car here, take off the valance and start painting. Okay, she's up, so now it's time to tackle the valance. So you might be thinking, how in the world did he get that off there so easily? And the trick is, I really never put it completely back on whenever I uh, swapped my exhaust. Because I knew I was going to be taking it back off again. The only clips that were really holding it in were these, um, the ones in these four holes here. And then the side clips, uh, they're on the sides here. So I actually have other um, rivet things, whatever you want to call them, the clip holders there. And then uh, an extra couple of side ones that I'm going to be putting back in there whenever um, I get it all painted up. So it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult when you're pulling yours off, if it's, especially if it's the first time you pull it out of there. Uh, the key are these tabs here. When you pull those off from the actual back bumper part, uh, they can be a little tight, so you might want to use a screwdriver to push those in a little bit to get them away from that hole. So for now, what I'm going to need to do is take this light part out, and it's basically just a couple of screws here. I could take that off pretty easily. 
and then I can start uh, start doing my painting. Sorry about that. And there you go. The reverse light is out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and clean this off first. i uh, probably use uh, just some regular water at first, soap and water, and then some uh, of that alcohol as well. So this actually has some of that isopropyl, isopropyl, iso something, dropping alcohol. All right, one of the other things that I want to do is actually get some of these scratches and these, these parts that are kind of stuck up, almost like road rash kind of things. Just going to maybe sand those down a little bit just to smooth them out uh, before I actually go ahead and paint. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down one more time just to get all that residue off. Okay, I think we are now ready to get this thing set up ready for paint. But first I'm gonna leave it out in the sun for a little bit, make sure it's nice and dry. All right, so here's how it looks before I start painting. And it might be kind of hard to tell from the, uh, from the video and my shadow being in the way. It's a little bit uh, scratched up, finishes kind of dull, like probably most of them are out there. So uh, once it's done being painted, I'm hopefully, hopefully this thing's gonna look really good. All right, so I actually went to Pet Boys and I was planning on buying some um, some primer and then just some black gloss paint, uh, like exterior type paint. And then I saw they had this. It's actually called Trim and Bumper Plate uh, Paint. Well, I can't even talk. Trim and Bumper Paint. And um, it says it renews, protects, has a flexible finish and excellent adhesion. So I went and I picked this up and I got this instead. And the, um, the interesting thing was... Uh, I'm trying to remember if I saw it. It basically said in the instructions that it's good for like metal and, and this kind of stuff. And it didn't mention anything about plastic, but you can clearly see there's a plastic. Oh, I got our neighbors trimming their hedges, of course. Um, so if you can hear me. But anyway, it has the, uh, the plastic bumper here. So I'm going to go ahead and try this stuff out. I didn't get primer because it didn't say anywhere on here that you need to prime anything first. So I'll give this a shot. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it looks good. And because it is for trim and bumper, uh, I'm assuming it's going to be it's going to be good. So I got my state of the art paint booth thing set up there. Look at that. So let me go ahead and get started and start painting this sucker. Okay, I just went ahead and put that first coat on there. I'm gonna let that dry and uh, put another coat on. Okay, round two, and it actually said on here that it fills um, fill scratches and cuts and stuff like that. So we'll see how that works as well. Go ahead and let that one dry. Round three. All 
All right, take a couple more layers and it should be done. All right, so here it is. I probably put about five coats on there and it actually looks pretty good. Much better than it did before. It didn't really get all of the, um, the scuffs and things out of there. I don't know if you can kind of tell on the video. Depending on the lighting, you can still see a little bit of the scuff marks. But uh, other than that, actually the paint, it looks like the paint has kind of a texture to it anyway, similar to what like an OEM plastic part would have. So that's kind of nice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it back on the uh, car and get it all installed. All right, so unfortunately I had to pull it back in the garage because we have a storm coming. You can kind of see it over there. Um, prediction for the day was supposed to be sunny all day. Of course here comes a storm. But anyway, I got the uh, rear valance put back on and it is much nicer than it was before. Now, I mean, there's still some scratches and stuff like that that unfortunately the paint didn't fill. They're just too deep in some road marks. But uh, just the color alone makes it a lot uh, a lot cleaner and a lot newer so I'm pretty happy with it and see if I can get a better shot like this you can see how dark it is compared to before where it was more of a, a grayish color so um, anyway that was actually a pretty easy mod so if you need to take your valance off and uh, and paint it it's pretty simple to do okay well that's gonna wrap up this video if you like what you saw please go ahead smash that subscribe button hit that little bell next to you so you get notified of any new videos I come up with hit that like button I like uh, to get as many likes as I can obviously and as usual if you have any questions comments or anything put those below and I will try to answer all of them that I can so until next time this video is over